Good show indeed coming up. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. We've got uh, some very good interviews this week, so do stay tuned. Now, we hear, uh, unfortunately, a great deal about Justin Trudeau, but come on, the poor guy. He's a mere shell, a, a vehicle, a vessel, a conduit, really, for other people and other ideas. But most of all, he's just a mediocre offspring of, I have to say, a gifted but supremely arrogant and failed man. Now, shortly, we're going to interview an expert on the legacy of Pierre Trudeau, a, a politician who tried to reshape this great country in his own image. Trudeau was a pampered playboy, a spoilt child of privilege, who took a working and fertile country with a tangible culture and tried to make it into a, a constituent assembly of special interest groups and so-called communities. Canada was a country of millions of individuals, but under the divine Pierre, it became a state composed of dozens of groups, ethnic, sexual, religious, political. That's why we have so many problems today. Now, we've partly, uh, but not completely repaired that damage, the damage he caused, but the job will never be done. It won't be done completely. The, the reason he got away with it, and that's the right phrase, got away with it, was because then, just as now, a bovine media has a chosen man, and the man is called Trudeau. Pierre, or well, they preferred Pierre, Justin, they'll settle for him. Tired, boring, grey journalists, particularly in Ottawa, they live vicariously through Pierre Trudeau. And so they let him get away with almost anything. And even now, the hagiographies, they keep on coming, don't they? But it took, really, a, a very gentle and rather anodyne comedy show to, to actually demonstrate this supreme snob's genuine sense of his own self and worth. Enjoy the outdoors, paddling on the water instead of walking on it. It gives woodland creatures a chance to bask in my aura. The chipmunks look like Art Eggleton without glasses. The reason always reminds me of Lucien Bouchard. You know, I was a born prime minister. Uh, the only thing missing at my birth was uh, three wise men. But where would you find three men wiser than me? <laughs> now, that's CBC comedy, so it's very safe and not very funny. But within all that, actually, they, they revealed the real man, the real snob, the, the, the almost self-parody of Pierre Trudeau. Instead of centuries-proven British law, he gave us an ersatz European model that improved nothing at all. Instead of personal responsibilities, he gave us group rights. Instead of respecting the Anglo-Celtic and Northern European traditions of English Canada, he consciously, aggressively tried to destroy that noble history and replace it with a stew of different and invariably curdling flavors. He alienated natives and Albertans and Americans, even his own Quebecers. He overreacted, I'm sorry, but he overreacted ridiculously, absurdly to what was really a minor terrorist attack, and he showed himself a bully and a dictator. He condescended to everyone, but particularly to MPs, beginning the process where backbenchers became useless voting tools, thus, more important, emasculating the democratic system. He seldom met a foreign despot he didn't adore, while severing links with the democracies who have been our friends and allies for generations. Morale sank, the economy floundered, but Trudeau prospered. He expunged dignity from Canadian politics with his royal-like family pretensions and feeble emulation of a Kennedy Camelot. Oh, come on! It was less the life of King Arthur than Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Have a look at this very short video now, please. That's impressive. A serious figure, someone to be respected. Even worse, and I think this says so much, take a look at this photograph. Now, he looks like he's just walked off the bloody yellow submarine. Fashion, transitory appeal, soundbite titillation, nothing of lasting merit, a museum piece, something to laugh at today. But tragically, there are still those who delight in his shadow, and they will do anything to see the Trudeau name dominate Ottawa and Canada once again. They want some sort of award, some sort of medal, and they'll give the gold medal to...
And my view is about Pierre Trudeau. And let me emphasize, I am one of the people who did not have one of Pierre Trudeau's love children. So don't accuse me of that. It's just not true. Neither did uh, Bob Plamondon, whose book, and let's have a look at the book now. Put it up on the screen so people can go and grab it and buy lots of copies. Great River Media, published about two weeks ago. The Truth About Trudeau, buy several copies. There you go, Bob. I've, I've done my duty. Now, um, we've waited a long time, really, for a, for a mainstream, a well-researched and written book, just exposing not really sensational stuff, but just the truth about Pierre Trudeau. Yeah, I mean, I think it's not sensational in the sense of I'm revealing uh, his, his personal life. Yeah. But it is sensational when you look at the record, what he did to Canada in terms of his impact on our national unity, his impact on the economy, his impact on Canada's place in the world and how we're perceived by other nations. I think that was not only impactful, but quite scandalous. Yeah. But we're sort of told today, almost indoctrinated, that before Trudeau, it was all a bit of a mess. This country had been a mighty power during the Second World War, the great litmus test of good and evil, fighting Nazism. It was highly respected. Trudeau, though, didn't find it, what, exciting enough? Uh, no, it wasn't exciting enough uh, for him. I mean, he, he wanted to transform the nation in, in, in many different ways. He believed in a big, act, a big activist, centralized government. He talked about a just society, remaking society, which was in reality, um, no different from socialism. And he was really trying to assert the French fact in Canada. Mm. But, you, you know, you're right. Before Trudeau, Canada was perhaps a little bit quiet, but we were, you know, united, a strong economy, growing economy. We were a little understated. Trudeau was a guy who brought a lot of panache to the table, a lot of flavor, a lot of style. But we have to ask in the end, what good did it do Canada? Yeah. Yeah, this, this is very interesting because I suppose, in a way, Canada did have that reputation of being maybe even dull. My golly, even dull. But it worked. As I mentioned, during the Second World War, a time of crisis, Korea, Canada was certainly there. It, it was united. And it did have that Anglo-Saxon link and tradition. And it seems that at a visceral level, that's what Trudeau really hated. He didn't want Canada in any way to be, well, not like Britain, but also not like the United States. No, he, in fact, didn't really believe in nation states. Um, he was, as he described himself, a citizen of the world, not so much a citizen of Canada. He didn't believe in nationalism. He was not one to take great pride in the accomplishments of the country. He did believe in individual rights and freedoms, as he described them, uh, although within the context of a big taxing, big spending government. So you, you lose a little bit of, of freedom there. He was a philosopher. Um, and, you know, he wanted to impose his idea of a just society on, on Canada, disregarding a lot of our traditions, uh, disregarding sound fiscal management of our economy. He, you know, he, he was someone who didn't think the free enterprise system fundamentally worked, that it was, was flawed. And, uh, you know, he had, a, he had a different vision for Canada that was, as I say, central, activist. Um, I think he fundamentally changed the nation and in ways that were not to our benefit. Yeah. And you mentioned he believed in, in, in rights and freedoms, and he did. I'm not saying the man was some sort of fascist. He wasn't. But he had this fetish about group rights, the idea that, that groups had to be represented, which I think is, is one of the foundational problems we now face in, in modern Canada. He took away individual freedoms and replaced them with, with, with group rights, and, and, and that's something I find it hard to forgive him for. Well, which is quite interesting because he articulated quite the opposite. He yeah. always said, I don't believe in group rights, and the main group whose rights that he did not want to sustain were the rights of French-speaking people in Quebec. Yeah. Uh, he did not believe in Quebec nationalism. He did not, did not believe in, in separatism. He talked about the individual as being the cornerstone of, of individual rights. But look what he did. Um, he restricted our ability to watch television shows. He said they had to be Canadian content, and radio had to be Canadian content. For the man who believed in, who said he believed in individual freedoms, he restricted our ability to choose our own health care. Um, you know, quite, uh, quite astonishing. So, you know, the walk and the talk were, you know, were, were, were quite different. Of course, he's known for bringing us the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which in large measure was really a transfer of power away from our elected officials and into the hands of the judici judiciary. Yes, and he's made lots of lawyers very wealthy, uh, of course. Just, just on what happened in Quebec with, with, with terrorism. Now, I'm not downplaying what happened. It was dreadful. But and ha having lived through Britain during the, the, the Ulster problems and the Middle East and so on, th this 
this wasn't a major issue. This could easily have been controlled by, by a serious police action. To bring in the armed forces was an overreaction. And, and, and his alacrity to suspend basic civil rights, that, I, I'm not some raving lefty, but I have real problems with that. Right. Well, you know, the real problem that I have with it is that um, the invocation of the War Measures Act was not, as Trudeau says, a at the request of the government of Quebec and, and the government of Montreal. It was a concoction of Pierre Elliott Trudeau. Yeah. And it wasn't a tool used... Um, to end terrorism or to, to end the hostage taking. It really was a political tool used by Pierre Trudeau to stop what he called in Quebec a rather disordered state. Yeah. What he was opposing was the fact that some leading intellectuals in Quebec were talking about negotiating with the terrorists and about remaking society in Quebec to be more respectful of the, of the French language. So imagine the defender of individual rights and freedoms uses the War Measures Act as a political tool. It's really quite un incredible. Yeah, and probably unprecedented in the democratic world. But, uh, but he did it, and he's still revered. Strange. Good luck with the book. Very necessary, and I thank you for it. Good to be with you, Michael.